So there's a new version of Photoshop, version 22, which seems unbelievable. I can remember when it was at version three, back in the mid 90s. I've been using this program for a long time. Now there's one big standout feature in version 22, which is the ability to do sky replacements really easily. Now I think on one hand that's a good thing, but on another hand it's a very bad thing. Now I'm not really a big fan of too much digital manipulation or of artificial intelligence making creative decisions about my photography. I like my photography to be based in honesty and the real world and to showcase the planet that we live on in all of its the rich tapestry of its colours and for all of its goods and for all of its bads. But there are times when we need to use these tools. Now I've been experimenting with the new version of Photoshop and I'm just going to show you some of the examples of what the sky replacement tool can do and talk about how I do it and talk about some of the good things and some of the bad things about it. So I'm just going to dive into the screen flow. Here we go. Okay, so good lord, this is going to create a lot of controversy. There's going to be people that have opinions that love it, people that have opinions that really hate it. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the examples of how I have been experimenting with this this morning so you can see what it's capable of. So here we have this picture taken in Porto in Portugal and it's this process is really rather easy to do. So you just go to edit and then to sky replacement and you just let the program do its thing. It takes a few seconds, you see the um, <laughs> adjustment wheel happening and then pop the sky goes in. And obviously there are a number of different skies that you can choose. It's preloaded with I think about 30 different skies. Um, you can also add your own skies in. And I'll get onto that in a second. But what you, you know, the way that this works is by choosing the most sympathetic sky, I suppose, to the picture. So, for example, if all I want to do is just to add a little bit of interest to the sky, which would be my main purpose for this picture from Porto, then choosing a blue sky picture just enhances a little bit. And I think that actually looks okay and you can then adjust your brightness or your temperature and you can fade the edges and you can make a couple of different adjustments. But actually that looks okay to me and I will just zoom in to see what kind of a job it's done with these trees and the rooftops and you know actually it's pretty faultless. Um, so just as a tool it, it works really well. There's obviously lots of moral arguments about changing reality and I'd be really interested to hear different people's opinions about those things. Our second example is of this tall ship and I'm really interested to see what kind of a job it does because look at all of these ropes and sails and masts, it's a really difficult fix. Um, now let's just see, so we go up to file, edit, sky replacement and let it do its thing. And the most important way of using these kind of tools is to be really sympathetic to the picture. Now you can see in the foreground of this picture that it wasn't a sunny day or it was sort of overcast and so by putting a blue sunny sky in it just looks unreal. And this is the, the, the heart of the problem with these kind of um, software tools is that if people start using it unreasonably then it just looks terrible and if they use it really well then it's it's just deceitful so <laughs> I don't quite know what the best outcome is but let's just keep going with the examples and you know so I'm looking for a sky from the that's a bit less sunny so this kind of dramatic sky might work quite nicely so we'll drop that in and again it's done it looks like it's done an incredible job there's no you can brush in extra little areas or um, adjust the size of the background if you wish to but at the moment I don't need to do any of that and I'm just gonna again just zoom in and just have a look see what kind of a job the sky replacement options made of this picture and you know really it's unbelievable that it's managed to find to mask all of these different areas with these ropes and actually it kind of even there look even right in on the you know you can just maybe start to begin to see a little bit of artifacting on the edges of those ropes but good lord it makes a pretty good job of this picture the next picture I have is this uh, soggy picture of a kite surfer 
taken with a, an underwater camera and you can see that there's some beads of water on the, the lens dome which is not perfect but I chose this picture because there is some really kind of confusing elements and I'm just interested to see how the software handles it again so we go to edit sky replacement and just let it do its thing and I'm interested to see what sky would go naturally with this so it is there is some some sunlight on this picture but it is quite kind of moody so I mean that sky looks okay but I'm wondering what happens if we go even more kind of crazy and try this sort of sunset option well that looks probably too much don't like it let's try this version um, Oh, and you know, kind of actually that looks okay. And um, again, this is at the heart of the problem. Of, it's kind of easy to me. <laughs> it's kind of actually solved a few of the water droplet pictures as well. It's easy just to flick through these things and kind of make pictures that were never actually there happen. And I, I find that really rather deeply concerning. Um, again, the, you know, I'll leave it at that. There's no other looking at the picture, zoom in there would appear to be no other uh, issues of error. You know, maybe there are a few little issues that, you know, there, for example, it's missed. And so it would require a little bit of work, but actually it looks okay. It's not a, not a disaster by any means. So this picture represents something that would be typically really hard to do normally because of the amount of detail in these trees. And it also represents a picture that a client may well ask me to do a sky replacement for. Now, with architectural photography, sometimes you have to shoot at not the most perfect time. Maybe it's because the scaffolding has just come down or maybe because there's a really tight deadline. Ideally, I'd like to wait for the for the sky and the light to be absolutely perfect, but sometimes that's just not possible. And so this would be something where, let's say the client wants a bit more detail in the sky and I can just come up here and add my sky replacement tool and see what it will do. I have no idea how it will manage these trees. I'll be really surprised. And actually, again, look at that. It's really, I'm kind of very, very surprised at how well it's done. Now, how are we coping up there in those trees? that you can start to see a little bit of artefacting going on. Um, now, the interesting thing here is that that sky is kind of far from perfect for a picture like this. I'd be looking much more for something that would be like that, let's say, which is kind of just the sky, but with a bit more blue and white clouds going on just to add a bit more interest. And okay, so let's just have a look at that now zoomed in and it's it's actually made an, a really incredible job um, I'd be really interested to hear others opinions about this so for the last example I'm hoping that I found a picture that might catch this software out and we'll just have a go because it is there's a rather complicated picture with the building behind and all of the different lines and the sails in the picture. And yes, it's completely caught out the software. So we've got these gaps here. Um, let's just hit, okay, I'm sure I could fiddle with it, but I don't know if it's really worth it because you've got this glow at the background, which is horrible. And then it's missed these gaps here in the building. It's filled in some of this area here on the sails and it's kind of, really confused this area. It's not an easy picture to mask at all, but it, it, the software is not perfect. It can be caught out. Okay, so this is interesting. This was shot in Portugal as well, and this is actually a real picture. This sky is real, this moment is real. There's been nothing that's manipulated about this picture. And this is again at the heart of the problem that I'm having to explain that it's genuine, <laughs> which is really rather concerning. Now, I took this picture from the hillside and by the time I had moved down to the shore to get more of a kind of beachy picture, the clouds have blown over. So my intention here is that I really like these clouds and I really like this setting, but by the time I got to the shore, they're gone. So what I'd really like to have done is to have frozen time and to get these clouds onto this picture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop out my sky and try to, um, add it in Photoshop as a sky. So I crop that 
and then I'm going to go to um, I'm going to export it and I'm going to save it in there as sky replace RR and export. Okay, so I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to edit it in Adobe Photoshop. I'm using Lightroom alongside Photoshop. You could do this in other ways. Okay, so here we have our picture in Photoshop and I'm going to go to edit my sky replacement, but I'm going to try and choose the picture that I just saved. So up here, it's going to make the mask now and apply this picture, but I don't want that picture. I want my own picture. And so what I'm going to do is go up here and go to this little um, cog in the sky and go new sky. And then it's going to allow me to search for the picture that I just exported and I'm going to open that. I'm going to call it the same thing and there is the sky and it's dropped that sky in so it's kind of an authentic sky. It's not perfect. The fall off here on the horizon is not perfect at all but I'm just going to um, come out there and maybe adjust the scale would that work ever so slightly no because then we crop into the sky so it's it's made a reasonable attempt at putting the real sky from the real day into the picture it's not perfect this is something that really needs to be played with over time and i think that there is a question mark over the focal lens you know if you're shooting on a really wide angle lens you really need a wide angle lens picture of a sky in order to retain the correct perspective um, and the same if you've shot on a telephoto lens then you don't want to be dropping a picture that was shot on a wide angle lens into that sky because it will just look wrong so thank you for watching i hope this has been of some use to you please do consider subscribing if it if you found it interesting um, so this raises all sorts of moral questions, doesn't it? Um, you know, the software clearly works, works really well in most circumstances. But I suppose the big question is, is should we be using it? Is it right for humans in our time to be changing things like this in this way? Um, and I'd be really interested to hear your opinion about what about your thoughts. Uh, you know, for me personally, I like my photography to be based in reality with authenticity. And I love waiting for the right light to come along and waiting for those ephemeral moments. And I will go to the to extreme lengths to get that nice light into my pictures. I don't just want to solve it at the click of a button. However, I've been using digital imaging for a long time. I use it for my pictures. I use it for my clients. Um, and so there is a place for it. I think I would always consider it to be a last resort rather than a, a, a solution to a, to a problem. I'd much rather wait for the light to get nice rather than solve the problem clicking a button. But under those conditions where, you know, you're under time constraints or a client needs something different, then it is something that I would consider using. Um, you know, for me, I always look back into the past. I always think, wouldn't it be nice just to shoot with black and white film on manual cameras again? Um, you know, and print in the darkroom. But actually, that was pretty extraordinary technology as well. And so this is just another step in that technological advancement. This is different because it actually adds content. And I think that if everybody's going to be just, you know, trying to improve their mediocre pictures by dropping one of the same 30 odd skies that's inside Photoshop onto their pictures and then passing it off as a good picture, then that's going to be terrible. Um, you know, I think that we're going to be, I think there's going to be a raft of new artificial intelligence based imaging software coming, whether it's in smartphones or software packages or even in Photoshop as we're seeing. And I think as photographers, we need to be really cautious about using it and try to remember that we should be photographing the world in all of its um, rich tapestry of colours for its good sides, its bad sides. It's, you know, just because the sky is a bit dull, does that mean it's a bad sky? <laughs> or does that mean that it's just a different sky? You know, and we shouldn't really lose track of that, that, um, you know, not everything can be perfect in this world. And I think as photographers, we have a duty to remember that and not to try and make everything look the same and generic. Um, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.